Record warmth extends from Texas to the Great Lakes. A deepening trough over the west brings snow to Wyoming and the Dakotas, and the latest down in the tropics, next on The Weather Farm. Welcome to The Weather Farm. These are your weather headlines for the coming week. Unseasonable warmth across the central plains into the eastern half of the United States. Snow for the Rockies and into the Dakotas. And what's going on in the tropics? We'll take a look here, all coming up. So let's take a look at our drought monitor that was issued last week. We do see areas of exceptional and extreme drought across parts of Ohio into West Virginia, but across parts of Texas into Oklahoma and far southeastern Kansas, as well as Wyoming and into the far parts of western North Dakota. We'll continue to monitor these areas, especially these across the Central Plains, as we have a good chance of precipitation and heavier rain coming this coming week to see if that will help alleviate some of these drought conditions. We take a look at the hazards for the United States at this hour on our Sunday night. We see that for Monday, we have red flag warnings across most of Kansas into Oklahoma, Texas, and Colorado. This combined with the relatively low relative humidities of 15 to 25 percent and gusty winds means that it will be an enhanced risk for any wildfires or burning so please limit your burning in those areas on monday in advance of a system that's expected to move on shore on wednesday we see winter weather advisories across parts of utah and colorado whereas winter storm watches have been hoisted for the bighorn mountains in wyoming as well as areas near Yellowstone and then near the Black Hills in South Dakota. On our Sunday night, we did see freeze warnings in effect from Pennsylvania into Maryland and Delaware. And we did see down along the Gulf Coast, we did see dense fog advisories for many of the parishes of Southern Louisiana. So let's take a look at the severe storm outlook in advance of this next storm. So for our Tuesday into Wednesday, they have highlighted an area from Texas through Oklahoma, through the Central Plains, all the way up to the Canadian border as being under a slight risk for severe weather. Again, this is Tuesday into Wednesday morning. They've taken it one level higher for cities like Wichita into uh, Omaha, Nebraska, into the Twin Cities. You are under a marginal risk for severe weather. So again, stay tuned. If we do need to go live, we will for severe storm tracking. We would expect that this area of, of, of severe weather would move east on Thursday. So areas like Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, eastern Texas into Mississippi, be on the lookout for your Thursday, your Halloween uh, severe weather, especially as we get close to those trick-or-treat times Thursday night. So let's take a look at this system as it moves on shore here. We see the jet stream, um, those winds that are way up in the atmosphere. We see that trough starting to move on shore. It's positively tilted, and we see that the area of strongest winds indicated by these darker reds and purples, they're on the southeastern part of the trough. This is a sign that the system isn't going to strengthen any further. It's reached its maximum strength. And actually, what we're going to see ahead of the trough and the low pressure is a lot of wind out ahead of it. So that's going to give us the gusty winds. It's going to give us the potential for the severe weather as this low pressure moves out of Colorado into the northern plains. This is starting Monday morning. We start to see that that system comes on shore. We see an area of low pressure develop here in Colorado. The moisture catches up with that low pressure, and it spreads snow across most of Wyoming for your Tuesday into Tuesday night. That precipitation starts out as rain across the Dakotas and changes to snow as that low moves from the Dakotas into, Minne into Minnesota. And then along that cold front, we do have that line of severe weather for your Halloween morning. As it moves down into the southeast, that's the area we're gonna watch for severe weather for those trick-or-treat times. But then by Friday, most of the United States is under calm weather for the upcoming weekend. In terms of precipitation, we're gonna see the greatest amount of snowfall. Again, this is through uh, Tuesday night, uh, and we're gonna see that have most in the mountains of Wyoming, where 12 to 15 inches of snow could fall, as well as the mountains of Colorado and the Rockies. Again, this is where the heaviest snowfall will, will fall uh, through Tuesday night. 
Then we look through uh, Wednesday morning at 7 o'clock, we see areas of snow moving through the Dakotas into North Dakota. Devil's Lake, you could see a couple inches of snow. The Black Hills, you could see four to eight inches of snow uh, by Wednesday morning, and then moving into uh, Ontario. And if we zoom in here, again, we get a better idea. Here, Rapid City, two inches of snow. The Black Hills, four to six inches. Places just um, east of the Bighorn Mountains could see in those lower elevations, one to four inches. Obviously, in the higher elevations, you're going to see 12 inches of snow. And we're going to see that precipitation uh, move into North Dakota. As far as rainfall, we're going to see, a, a, depending on where the storms set up and where we see those downpours, that's where we're going to see those heaviest amounts of precipitations. But generally, one to two inches could be expected. And so through our Halloween night, we'd expect a general swath of one inch through parts of central Texas moving up towards Arkansas, and we'd see heavier amounts towards the coast. And as we go up into the Great Lakes, we also see uh, heavier amounts of precipitation in northern Illinois, southeastern Iowa, and most of Missouri. Again, it's going to really be dependent upon where those uh, downpours set up and where the most severe storms uh, come into play. And so that's something we're going to continue to watch here at the Weather Farm. So again, stay tuned for the latest on that. If we look at our upper air map, as I mentioned, this week we're going to have this large area that's going to bring above normal temperatures across most of the central plains and eastern half of the United States. Here's that area of low pressure in that trough that's digging across the west that we're, we were talking about earlier. As it, it digs in, and it's, again, it's in a weakening state. Um, it's positively tilted uh, trough. So it's going to kind of lose its punch. It's going to run into an area that it's going to be very hard to break down this high pressure ridge. So we might wait for the next one that's going to come on shore by Halloween into the Pacific Northwest. Um, and that's going to pretty much stay up and it's going to ride up and over this ridge like most of the troughs have done during the month of October. So we're really not going to see a change in our pattern here in the eastern half of the United States for most of this week. Yes, it will cool down as that rain comes through on Thursday, but we watch another trough start to dig, and this one goes down to almost to the Baja of California. So this is going to be one we're going to start watching for next weekend. And so if we look at our high temperatures for our, wind, or for our Monday, I'm sorry, we're going to see widespread 80s and 90s across the Central Plains. We could potentially break 40 uh, record highs on our Monday. So this is going to be places like uh, Wichita, into Oklahoma City, into Dallas, uh, and, and parts of Texas. All those areas are going to be in play for breaking record highs. And if we look at our temperatures um, moving into our Tuesday, we see that that warmth starts to spread a little bit further east. Places like northern Illinois are going to be in the low 80s on our Tuesday. Even the Twin Cities, you're going to be approaching 80s, if not in the lower 80s on our Tuesday. Just unheard of, 30, 35 degrees above the average high temperature for this time of the year. We start to see even the Northeast making a warming trend. Where you'd been in the 30s and 40s in Maine, you still will be there. Um, we start to see that warmth starting to move in your direction. Whereas we see across parts of Wyoming where the snow will be falling most of Tuesday, we see temperatures generally in the 20s and 30s. Moving to our Wednesday, that warmth continues to move east. Again, probably a couple dozen record highs are in jeopardy of being broken on our Wednesday. We see the demarcation of that, of that line of cooler and warmer temperatures. So again, this is again where we're going to see that potential that the Storm Prediction Center has mentioned for the risk of severe weather. So we'll continue to watch this area down in Oklahoma and Texas and continue to monitor that. The mountains, mountainous west remains in the 20s and 30s. Now parts of Maine, you've warmed in the 50s and 60s. New York City is going to be in the 70s here. And then by our Thursday, that, cold, that cooler air, I won't say cold, but it continues to move further east. Indianapolis, you're going to be at 60. Twin Cities, a couple days ago, you were flirting with 80. You're going to struggle to get out of the 40s for your Thursday, for your Halloween. Um, and then across the mountainous west again, 
uh, 20s and 30s. We see the, the, the real warmth, the 80s and 90s, really suppressed down along the coast and in parts as far southern Texas. So let's take a look at the tropics. Um, we've been watching this area. Models have been hinting for about a week now of something developing here. And now the National Hurricane Center has gone ahead and jumped on that and said that there's a 40% chance of something developing in the next seven days. We do have exceptionally warm sea surface temperatures here, generally around 30 degrees Celsius. So that's going to be a favorable environment, very low wind shear. Uh, and so as, as that complex of thunderstorms starts to move out off of, the, off of the coast into the open waters and interact with these warmer temperatures, we're just going to continue to watch that. But we could have our next named storm down in the Western Caribbean by this time next week. If we take a look at our temperatures outlook for the next 8 to 14 days, after we get through this little cool down midweek, uh, looking at the period from November 4th through November 10th, most of the country is expected to have above normal temperatures to start the first 10 days of November. It's going to be pretty much like what we saw for most of October, where most of the United States was above normal. This is expected to continue into our November. But I do want to go up to Alaska. I want to look at the northern part. And this is a map that's going to show us the snow depth. So as you see here, you're going to see the snows here in Colorado and Wyoming that we are going to get over this upcoming weekend uh, and week. Um, we're going to see them fill in, and then they're going to go away as the temperatures warm up. So this is the snow depth, how much snow is actually on the ground. But look up here. As we get toward the middle of November, after the 10th, we start to see a, a big expansion of the snow depth across the far northern uh, territories of Canada. So place into the Yukon, Northwest Territories, none of it. Um, we start to see that snowpack really developing. And if you click on the video up above, I talked about this in one of my earlier videos about how the snowpack uh, building across parts of Alaska and the northern prairies and provinces of Canada, how that was going to have an impact on our weather here in the lower 48. So this is definitely a, a good sign that we're seeing this. We're starting to even see it fill in into far, far northern parts of Alberta and Manitoba. So this is going to be a pattern we're going to continue to watch. So stay tuned for the latest here at the Weather Farm. Well, we've hoped you've enjoyed this uh, look at the upcoming week here at the Weather Farm. Check back with us weekly. We'd love to hear your comments about what we could do to improve and make the weather more useful for you. Have a great day.